you're going to uh, take your design that you've created in Photoshop and the design should look pretty much like you want the page to look like on the web. So it looks like we've almost got clickable buttons here and we've got some content and you want your client to be able to see what the site is actually going to look like so you'll put content in even if it's not exactly what you would have in the final uh, web site you want to have something that uh, can fill it out and make it look like it's complete. All right, at that point, once the client okays it, then you're going to say, all right, now we want to slice this up and bring it into a web page. So how do we do that? Well, I've already done a bunch of slicing here. I'm going to go to View, Show, Slices, and I'll show you why I, I selected the slices that I did. First of all, uh, I've got this little star field thing going on and what I want to have happen is the star field to extend the entire top of the page no matter how wide somebody might pull their browser I like the idea of it just kinda of extending out but I don't want it to be part of the container the container is actually gonna be this dimension by this dimension okay that's where I'm gonna have my container I'm gonna put this star field on the body tag. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so we've got a header which is sliced out and then I've got this this navigation area which I want to have as its own slice and then I've got this area here which I want to have a slice for and the reason is because I've got this little background graphic in the background. What I'm going to do is turn off the content here a minute so you can see that this little guy here causes a little bit of a problem because I don't want that to repeat over and over again but I do want it to be on the page so what I'm going to actually do is stick this in the div tag of a div called middle which I'll show you in a minute and then I'm going to have this be the repeating region all the way down through so that as we add more content here this region just repeats 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 and you can expand it as wide as as long as you want Okay. then I've got a footer so the the basic ingredients for most sites are going to be header some kind of nav some kind of middle area and some kind of footer okay you can have stuff on the left and right and I actually do here but I'm gonna put that in the body tag <coughs> but uh, so you'd have this set up the client says I like it let's go with it then you can turn this off and I'm actually going to turn off these buttons because they're not going to be rollovers for me. I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, CSS styling to make my rollovers. Okay, so I'm getting rid of that. And now we're getting down to the basics of what I want to slice out. I want to slice out a header. I want to slice out this little navigation area, this separate, this, and this. Okay. Um, and that's it for the slicing part. You should know how to do that by now just by going to save for web and devices and it brings up this whole area. You can compress different parts of it. I'm not going to go into that because I think that's explained pretty well in the Linda tutorials. So I'm going to cancel this a second. And we're going to assume that we've sliced it all. We've put it into its own folder and we go down to Dreamweaver and show you where everything is. When I sliced it, um, here is my Madfest folder. Here's my images. And all the different images are located in there. Okay. You can see there's a bunch of them. I'm actually not going to use a bunch of those little slices along the sides because I don't need them. But uh, I'll show you what slices I am going to use. Okay. So I'm going to be working on. Uh, page in my Madfest folder called layout and I'm just called that layout because I'm going to eventually make a template out of this I didn't want to call this index because I'm going to make a template page and then the template is going to have an index page so I'm, going to, I'm in layout right now those are my files all right now I'm going to take a look at how I style this thing first of all there's a body tag. The body tag applies to everything that you see on the page. And you can actually style that body tag. And I'm going to show you how I styled it. I'm going to select everything here, all the way down to the closing body tag. And I'm going to comment it right here, which means it's going to grade out 
apply HTML comment, grays it out, so now this isn't being affected. And I click over here. This is my body tag. And the body tag, all it's really displaying is this graphic that repeats across the top. I'll show you that. Here it is. I'll double click it and see if we can open up. All right. So the body tag, you can actually here just determine the different uh, font that you want to be a, a uh, default font throughout your site. You can also select the background. I made a background color of, of black. I could have made this any color I want. Apply it. There it is. All right. Turn it back to black. Apply it. Okay. The other thing that I have on here is an image, which is a repeating uh, image of the star field at the top. I'm going to go ahead and browse and show you it by itself. And it is called background repeat 3.2. This is the image, it's just this long skinny bunch of stars. It doesn't extend the whole way, it's just a skinny thing that I'm going to repeat over and over and over again. And if I choose it, I want to repeat it on the x-axis, which means it's just going to repeat this way. If I would have just had background repeat, and I apply it, it's going to repeat across the whole screen in the background. If I had repeat y, and applied it, it would just go up and down. So I want it to be repeat X. And that allows the entire screen, no matter how big I make my browser, I'm always going to see that star field at the top. Okay. I'm going to go back and I'm going to uncomment all of this HTML so we can see it again. There we go. Alright, so that star field is just kind of going in the background there at the top. Now let's take a look at the next step. Next step would be my container. The container is uh, styled in this way. I've got it set at, well, let me, let me open up the box for it. Look at the box first. I've got it set at 1142 pixels wide. The height is going to be auto. Now that's important because I want this container to expand depending on how much information is in here. Okay. I don't have to float it because I'm going to center it in the middle by going right auto and left auto. All right, go back up to the background, and I've got no background color. Don't need it because I've got the background color covered by the body tag, which is going to be black. The thing that I do want is to have a repeating image, and this might be a little surprising to you what I'm going to repeat here. I'm going to go ahead and show you that it's 31111. I'm going to go browse for it to show you what it looks like, and it is right here. Here is the background for the entire container. It's, it takes its place from that little chunk that I showed you in Photoshop down here where I want that piece to repeat over and over and over again. So no matter how long this gets, that piece keeps repeating. That's going to repeat the entire length of my container. Okay, So I'll choose that. I want it to repeat on the y-axis, meaning I want it to go up and down. And I'm going to say, OK, that's my container. So it's got a width, it's got an automatic height, and the height is determined by what we put inside of it. Let's look at the next thing. We've got the um, header. The header now is going to be this section right here, and all it is is the, here's our tag, is the background image, which is the header image, and then I'm floating it to the left. It's got a height of 190, which is the exact dimensions of the actual image by 1142. So we're just going to float that thing right in there, and it's going to stick just where it belongs. The nav is a little bit different. What I've got is a, a background image for this navigation tag, which is going to contain that entire area from here to here. But I want these buttons to be floating separately on that nav uh, tag. So what I've got is an ID for nav, which is right here. And it just has a background image in it. It's 81 pixels high. I'm floating it to the left. And it's the entire width of this, the, uh, the container. But within that, I want something to float on top which are my buttons and so that gets a little interesting here's my div id for my buttons let's see what it looks like 
right down where are they? they're there okay now I'm floating these ones to the right usually I float stuff to the left if I'm talking about the structural makeup of the the uh, page but here I've got this area where I can float the this tag all over the place in this nav and I'll show you right now right now I've got a little margin on the right of it at 160 because that's where I wanted it to be I could have made that 300 and I'll show you what happens when I do that it just pushes it over 300 pixels from the right side and go back to 160 again and that'll push it back there and you can just kind of push it around with your margins your top left right margins the width of it is just 500 pixels this is it you can see the little yellow lines around it I could actually make that a little bit smaller it doesn't matter I just picked 500 uh, that 4500 is a little too big. I'm going to make that there. And you can see that that cut it down a little bit. But since my buttons aren't any wider than that, then it doesn't matter. Okay, so I've got a margin at the top, which is pushing it down from the top here. Margin at the right over here. And uh, the height is 50 pixels. That's enough to put these, uh, these this text field in here. And that's it for my buttons. They can just kind of float along. Now, I am using a list for my buttons, and it's a good idea to use lists. Here they are. Okay. Why is this list able to go horizontally rather than straight up and down or vertically? It's because I've done something to the list. I'm going to go to the, the uh, li tag. If I can find it. There it is. And there's, there's a path name to it because I don't want it to necessarily be this way for every list on the page that I create. So the path name to it is container nav buttons div list. So let's let's open that up a minute. And I'm going to go take a look at the box of that list. I'm just giving it a padding of 25 pixels to the right which is going to allow me to to adjust how wide these images are from each other these these pieces of text. I'm going to go ahead here now and hit 50 and I'll show you how that changes it. It pushes them further and further apart. I'll put 5 and you'll see that they'll get closer. There they are. So I'm going to put it at 25 and apply it. Okay. Now how are we getting this list to display horizontally? That's in something called block and display inline. So we're going to display that in line. If I had none here and I applied it, then it actually disappears because it doesn't know what to do with itself because it's it's now trying to display vertically. So I'm going to go back to display in line, apply it. There it is. Okay. That takes care of the navigation area. And now we're going to move down to the next, which is going to be after the buttons. We're going to come into what I call the middle. 